So hi everyone, welcome to another Hashtag Ask Gym. This is, I don't know, I think like 165 of these we've been doing. So every three weeks in training we do these with our great training group, which you're all here listening up, which is fantastic, Jim. So let's get straight into it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna read out your name and then you can come up to the microphone and ask Jim a question, but by all means at any time, please come up and ask Jim anything you like and you get a pick of these prizes at the end as well. So let's start off with first with Bilal from Painting. Is Bilal here from Painting New Zealand? Painting yeah. New Zealand. Come up, mate, ask your question. I don't got the microphone, we've got to hear, and we've got to get, yeah, there's a microphone there, yep, okay. go for it. So, as I know, like uh, the painting in Auckland, is like a uh, new, I think, as I knew the, from the robot over there who operated that, it's like, uh, it haven't been started yet, uh, will be starting soon, so like my question is, like, um, uh, what kind of thought you got about this new business you're developing is there, what kind of preparation you have done so far? Well, painting's already going quite successfully in Australia. I have to say being the first in New Zealand is going to be a challenge because the brand, the brand isn't known yet. So you're going to be the person who's going to pioneer it. But hopefully you'll do very well. I mean, you can't make a lot of money out of painting, no doubt about it. But the yeah. brand is known in, what, in regards to mowing. So the brand is very well known. We've got 350 odd franchisees in New Zealand, which is not too far short of Australia laying population, but painting's new. But it does link in well with Jim's handyman. He's got like, is it 20 yeah. franchisees there? So. Handyman's yeah. growing very well. Fencing's growing pretty yeah. well. Dog wash, test and tag, yep. mowing, they're all growing. So it's, it's a good market for us. You know, that's how I know, like, uh, this is a well-established company. This is that my gut feeling is, even though this company open anything new, it will go through, you know, very well. So um, I haven't seen any, like, advertise, like, even though you Google it, like, um, not much advertising, like, oh, we're going to um open up like a uh, painting with well, there's, there's no point in starting it when you're not there <laughs> otherwise they're just wasting <laughs> once you start we'll put a campaign out yeah it'll be like um google adwords it'll be like facebook we'll give you a, a google my business page and we'll, we'll boost you once you begin All right at the moment it'd just be a waste people just get frustrated hey you're advertising painting but you can't do it All right so we have to wait till you are on board and then we'll give you a, a good push Oh, that's great. Thank you. There you go, good man. Thanks for that question, Bilal. Um, and we've got one here now from Dogwash. Is it from, is it Avro or Det? Sorry, my pronunciation is a little better than that. From Dogwash. Um, about Star Wars. Who asked that one for Jim? Are they here? I'll read them out real quickly. If you've got a question, they come up and ask for Jim. Keep going yeah, for it. Go ahead. Hey, Jim. Um, my husband and I are very much a young couple, and we wanted some advice on how you balance family life and um, work life so that you both have a healthy business and a healthy family life as well. You know, one of the best ways to, de to de balance family life and um, work life is to, is to buy a franchise. Because in fact, that's one of the major motivations people have. You get a lot of people, we, we get a lot of people who are, like especially from corporate backgrounds, they work very long hours, they commute hours a day, don't see their kids. They come across to gyms, they make usually similar money, sometimes better, but they see their children grow up. The great thing about it is you can be flexible. You can pick up your kids from school, for example. Like, I work very long hours. If you, if you email me at nine o'clock at night, I'll probably respond to you within the next half hour or so. But I pick up my son from school today, and I usually take him to school too. So that's the great thing about a franchise, you don't have to. I would say it's, it's not worth it. There, there's a saying that goes, no other success can compensate for failure in the home. You don't need, you shouldn't spend so much time on your business that you neglect your family. It's just not worth it. And in the businesses that we do, every single one of them, you can actually make a good living without letting, letting your children suffer. So it's a great place to be. Thank you. Thank you very much. The title of my next book actually is going to be No Other Success because I think it's so important that particular point. Um, so you obviously started in mowing and then now you've expanded into other divisions. Yeah. What goes into you deciding, you're obviously the one that decides what new divisions you open. What goes into that decision and like, where are you looking to go from here? Are we going to see Jim's massage or Jim's, yeah. <laughs> Jim's shoe beauty, polishing in the future? Jim's beauty, Jim's massage, Jim's tutoring, Jim's, uh, there's a whole lot of ones we're just looking at right now. Yeah, scaffolding ones before coming? Scaffolding, yeah. 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 Look, yeah. there's various things. First of all, if somebody comes to us for the new division and we want to know, can you make at least 60 bucks an hour? Average person. Yep. If you can't do that, we're not interested. That's the minimum we think that a franchisee should make. 
Then we look at the industry. Is it big enough? Has it got enough people? We don't want a business that you've only got 10 people in the whole of Australia. Because ours is based on numbers. You want at least you know, 30, 40, 50 for a decent division. Ideally, at least 100. So you need the potential for that. Yep. But when you've got those two things settled out, the really important thing is uh, the person driving it. Yeah. Are you the right person? Have you got the right skills? Have you got the right character? If you're a franchisee, which is usually where people come from, what's your income? What are you turning over? What's your customer service rating? Are you a trainer? Are you helping others? Are you advising them? Are you that kind of person? And honestly, the person driving it is what decides it 99%. And it's not universal. I would say probably of the new divisions we start, maybe one in three would fail. So it's quite a so high... opened and closed divisions? Absolutely. There's a whole stack we've opened and we've closed. Um, what's, the, what's the recent one? Um, the recent one that... Oh, we had garage doors that went for a while and then closed. We started it again just now. Mm. We had... Um, Site Solutions, which is not doing very well. That's um, there's only got one person. That's really not doing very well. Solar all. went stopped and then reopened as energy. That was the one before. Yeah, solar, yeah. solar die. Sometimes we, we quite often re re resurrect them, but if you've got the right person behind it. Okay. But honestly, it's the it's the it's the person behind it because we provide the background in terms of training, and you know customer service and the and the IT systems and how to be a effective franchisor. And, and, you know, social media and PR and marketing, we can provide help with all those things. But it's the person driving it that really counts. Okay. If you've got the right person, it's fantastic. Like Laundry, started two and a half years ago. It's got like 80... Yeah, around 80, yeah. 80 franchisees, which is tremendous. Why? Great leader. Yeah. It's his wife's idea, though, so... It's his wife's it idea. It's his wife's idea, yeah. So she, she got a nice present out of him for that, but... <laughs> yeah. I've also got a, another question, which is on the list. I'll ask it Go now it. so I don't come back. What's your favourite scented candle? What? What's your favourite scented candle? That's a, that's a first, that one. That's a, that that's is a first, first one. I thought I'd go outside. outside that of is box, a really you know? good original I one. I do not have I wanted any to, I wanted to stump you with one. In scented candle. I was expecting uh, grass clippings, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> if there was such a one, it probably would be up there. I think the smell of fresh grass would be a pretty, pretty nice candle, so that's a okay, good idea. Thanks, mate. Well done. Good question. Good man. Go for it. Come on. Hi, Jim. Um, quick question. I think um, a lot of us here are buying franchise for the first time and stuff. And what is your advice on um, people buying multiple franchise or what is the roadmap or buying multiple franchises in different divisions? Let's say I'm a car detailing and I want to get into scratch and dent repair. So having multiple options and stuff. The only way it's businesses. worthwhile if you do that is if you've got, you're employing a lot of people. Okay. As an individual, you will find that you've got far more car detailing than you can possibly handle. So there's no point in having two sets of fees. Most franchisees are flat out within a few months, quite a few in the first, in the first month. So you'd, you'd never buy it to keep yourself personally busy because you're just paying extra fees for nothing. Now, if you're employing three or four people and you want to start a new division, that's the time when you should look at a new franchise. So you've got someone like Bill Cobbinoglu who's actually, he's got cleaning and he's also got laundry. But he's got a team of people and he's got franchisees and even franchisors who work with him. So at the, at the upper level, yes. For a one-man band, absolutely not. We would actually advise you against it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks for that question. Good one. We've got some more here as well. Where's Craig from Cleaning? Craig from Cleaning had a few they wrote down. Where's Craig? The one about mental health services and stuff? Is he here? No. I'll, I'll read them out. When, when you started your own business, where did you think it was going to end up? Um, well, <laughs> <coughs> when I started full-time in 1989, I thought it was going to be something temporary to do until something better came along. Honestly, I did not see the potential. It took me many years. Even after the franchise started, I didn't have any idea how successful it would be. Mm. I just wanted to do the job well. I wanted to give good customers to customers. I wanted my franchisees happy. I thought when I started, I might have 100 one day. So it just surprised me. And the second question is, did you really start gyms to fund your research? Can you go into this more? Yeah, I did. I did. I did a PhD in my, in my 20s. Um, came across it as a very radical understanding of what history is, which actually had biological implications. And I think it's something that could make a great deal of difference to the world. But at that time, my PhD was in history, all the implications were in bio biology. 
I knew I had to get a research foundation going, so I had to become rich. And that's literally the first time I ever thought about it. I now spend something like $3 million a year on this, on this research project. And one day it may change the world. I'll leave it up to people to ask you how, but I won't we'll yes. go into it. There's that a is... couple of books here if anybody wants them, but there's only two. Um, if you go to biohistory.org, you'll see some videos in there. And there's another one here as well from him. Could we offer a mental health service to our customers through gyms? You have to be a psychologist, I think. Yeah, a bit of yeah. liability stuff there. Yeah, I, nothing wrong with gyms, mental health. It's, it's something I'm passionate about. But we actually tend, rather than counselling, we tend to believe in community. That's a community of franchisees. We support men's sheds very strongly because we think that's a great cause. People get, need to get together. There's too much individual separation. I mean, deaths of despair are terrible. We had a, a franchise all commit suicide just a week ago, and it's just awful. This is somebody we know, and this happens. As I said in, in training on Monday morning, the number one threat to our franchisees is not accidents, it's not car accidents. We've only had one person ever die on the job. It's suicide. So it's a very big concern to us. We do a lot of stuff about that too. All of our franchisors have mental health training, including myself. Um, we have a um, paid for psychologist. Any franchisee can approach for online help, for phone help, without any cost. And we don't even know who's applying. We have volunteer mentors amongst franchisees. Every state has franchisees who volunteer to help people with it. We have send out um, cards, fridge magnets, with all the, the, we are really committed to mental health. But the best thing we can do actually is to get people to come and be, take part of us. Come to meetings, talk to your franchisor, talk to your fellow franchisees. And that's one of the major benefits that we offer. And what a lot of people don't know is well, our franchisees, for let's say a lot of the older generation, it might be the only person they see for the week or two. Yes. It's almost like a little welfare check in a way as well. So that's yeah. something a lot of people don't know, but a lot of our franchisees do do in their day. When I talk to franchisees, I, I ring franchisees on, on their big anniversary, like 10, 20 years. And um, I, I ask them about the situation. And it's, it's actually very striking that, that most of them mention that the relationships, the franchisor, the group that they're with as being so important to them. Not always just about money, it's about, it's about people. Guys, if you've got another question, please come to the mic anytime and ask Jim. We've got another one here from, is it from Craig from Cleaning? Where's Craig from Cleaning? Is Craig here? No, I'll read it out for him. Jim, who does your weeding at your yard? Or your yard care? <laughs> yeah. His grass is looking a bit shabby at National here, so what about your house? It's pretty bad, actually. There's a, a Milo who does the grounds around here. He's going to come across and look at our place on Friday. Hmm. There's, there's some weeds in the front garden, which is about that high. I've been noticing them. Yeah. Go for it. Yep. I like gardening, but more at my farm, like potatoes and stuff like that, vegetables. Uh, I think we can be all very thankful for what you've built, and that gives us the opportunity to be here today. Um, but just spent years and years building it and a lot of what you're showing us today is about the vision you had and, and putting it together with your leadership. Um, but just wondering what's, what's next, basically, what is the plan when Jim will not be the CEO anymore of Jim's? Um, when we go in a business, it's always a, we need almost a strategy to exit. Uh, and, and basically, is there any risk identified when, um, when you, you're going to be doing that move? And... Uh, um, any timeline about it and, and course of action identified and just, uh, Well, you know. the timeline is this. If you go on Google and you can actually look at your lifespan. Have you ever done that? How long are you going to live for? And they ask you questions about your health, your weight, smoking, drinking, are you married, all these kinds of things too. I actually, on every measure possible, I have the longest possible lifespan. So I'll probably live another 20 odd years which is probably, I'm afraid to say, more than most people here. <laughs> We'd love to see you all last 20 plus years, but I'll most likely, I do not think it's conceivable that I could or would ever retire. I have great people doing a lot of things now. I have great managers. I have people like Joel. I have Rocky. I have John in finance. I have terrific people. And I can tend to keep on having a role in gyms as long as I'm alive. After I am dead, um, there's a family trust structure set up. Basically, my children and their married partners will direct it. And it will, it'll be run for the sake of my foundation, which is the epigenetics. 
and also for the sake of them in terms of helping them with housing and stuff like that. But I've got 10 children, so there's, the money's not going to get spent out too much. I am quite determined that gyms will never go public. To me, the worst disaster would be to have some some horrible, greedy corporate types come in and go for the, 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 the strongest, the next quarter's earnings. If you do that, the spirit of gyms will die. Well, Channel 9's coming to you to interview you about that tomorrow, actually. Yeah. Channel 9 News. Yeah. So, yeah. Look, uh, um, yeah, I'm, one of the things, there's, there's a, um, they're reviewing the franchising code, and every time they do it, I, I, I've got in, in public and I've said to them very openly, this is ludicrous. The code itself does nothing to protect franchisees. The disclosure document is so dense that virtually nobody ever reads it. It is meaningless. You're supposed to get advice from a lawyer. Lawyers know nothing about franchising. And why should you go to some domestic, you know, some suburban lawyer who knows nothing? What advice are they going to give you? And even if they gave you advice, how do they know how the business runs? So what I've said to them, and i said to them every time I'm going to make a really big fuss this time, I'm going to speak to Channel 9 about it, we want a system where the franchisor goes to an approved franchising lawyer and gets a summary of what there's like, paid for by the franchisor, shown to every franchisee, an expert, no cost to the franchisee. We want every franchisee to be surveyed every year as far as possible. We do this ourselves. We get 95%. We know it's possible. It's not that expensive. At their franchise expense, every franchisee in the country gets polled, and you put the whole thing on an open website so everybody can see how often is the franchise or ring. How do you rate your income? Good, satisfactory, poor. How quickly do they respond? Those kinds of basic, simple questions, and let everybody do that. If you did simple things like that, franchise or cost, the level of service to franchising would go up dramatically. And these greedy, money-sucking, so there are horrible people out there in the franchising world. There's, lots, there's good ones too. I'm not blackening everybody, but we know the really bad ones. I don't know if you heard about Retail Food Group. This was a company that bought a whole lot of brands like Brumbies, and they destroyed them. They ripped off the franchisees blind. They make them change their, they, they change the manuals. So you've got to do a whole new revamp. The system comes to an end, and they take the business back from them. No goodwill, no payment, no nothing. They treat people like dirt. They make them sell pizzas for below the cost of the ingredients. I mean, there's dreadful things that go on in the franchising world. The government does nothing to protect them. Nothing. I think it's infuriating. And we are the biggest franchising chain in the country. Franchisors need to be held accountable. And if we don't measure up, then so be it. If somebody's better than us, then they deserve to do better than us. And then we need to pick up our socks and do better ourselves. Mm. That's what we need to do. People have got to start thinking about ordinary people, and not the interests of these blood-sucking lawyers and financial advisors who give nothing. Save it for tomorrow. It'll be good for tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there was another part to the question, which I think is a good one to get as well, about that CEO. When are you going to transition out from CEO? What time? What, will you have a party for it? No, no, I'll, I'll, have a, I'll have a ceremony and I'll be a guest of honour in a box. There we go. So that's the answer. <laughs> we got a question, guys? Feel free I to cannot conceive. I'm in time of my life. I love my job. I find enormous meaning in it. I, I enjoy it. I love training. This is fun. It really is. I love, I love meeting you guys and chatting to you and seeing you and seeing everybody so excited and happy. I love hearing from you after one month. How well you're going? Most of you are going well. I love talking to my 10-year veterans. It's exciting. I love talking every day about the different things we can do to improve it. We're, we're growing. We're changing. We're getting better all the time. And it's, 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 the, it's the job of the century. It's the best job in the world. Just to reiterate, people, you've got more energy now than probably when I first met you 12 years ago. So you've got yeah. a lot more energy now. So yeah. it's, it's amazing. I go for a 5K run every morning and lift weights and I work on my farm and I'm full of energy. Absolutely. I often just run for the sake of it. I'm 71. I look at but I do not feel it. <laughs> And guys, if you've got a question, please feel free to come up to the mic. I know I've got him here, but be, come up to the mic anytime as well. Cool. Hello. Yeah. Um, what did it take to build an empire? Uh, you've, you've just got to look every day at what you could uh, and how to do it better. That's the one simple thing. Never be satisfied. No level of customer service is good enough. No level of service to my franchisee is good enough. Always, every day, ask yourself the question, how can I do it better? 
the ones that fail are the ones that say everything that's going wrong is somebody else's fault. It's the clients, my franchisor, it's gyms, it's the economy, it's the government. The good ones say, what can I do? I can't control all that stuff, but I control what I do. And they're the ones that succeed. That's the one thing. And do you know his dad's a franchisor in pool care as well? Oh, really? His dad's name, sorry. Gino. Gino Basado. Oh, Gino. Right. Okay. All right. In the family. In the family business. <laughs> I wish my kids were a bit more entrepreneurial. They're not. They're all bloody professionals like <laughs> IT and doctors and lawyers and yeah. stuff. You got a question, guys? Please feel free to come up and ask. Cool. Hi, Jim. <coughs> Do you ever regret not having a beard anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if I had a beard, I'd look like Santa Claus. I wouldn't look like you. <laughs> I shaved it off 23 years ago because I was single and it was starting to go grey. And when you're in your late 40s and wanted to get married, you do not need to look any older than you are. <laughs> if I was single now, which God forbid I would never be because I love my wife, but uh, I, think I'd, I think I'd be a bit of a problem. Hey, who wants to be out with a geriatric? <laughs> We've done a bunch of videos with Jim with the beard on as well, so you can head yeah. to the, the channel and see the Jim Land stuff as well. So the one here I had was from Dogwash. Is it, is it Arrow or Debt from Dogwash? Are they here? Aaron. Aaron, is it Aaron? Yeah. Oh, he's not here? Okay, well, let's read out his questions anyway. Star Wars pre he goes, Star Wars prequels or Disney? <coughs> is the question. Star Wars prequels? Or Disney, that's the question. Or Disney? Yep, that's literally the question. They're on Disney. That's what he's oh, right. Well, that's what he wrote. I remember his question, actually. What was his it? question was, what was your favourite, like, Star Wars movies? Was it the first three, the second three, or the what, new ones on Disney? No, I like, I, like the, I like the prequels. The prequels? I like, I'm a great fan of Albert Palpatine. Yeah, yeah, because you know. I think that was the next question. Who was your favourite character from Star Wars? Uh, Palpatine. Palpatine? <laughs> there we go. All now, this, right. is a, this, is, this is a heroic figure who manages to bring peace and order to the galaxy. I mean, who wouldn't love Palpatine? Yeah, 100%. 100% I, love, I, love I love the picture about how he starts up as this senator and he's, you see this picture of him sort of in this sunshine and his hair blowing in the wind and he's this good guy. And, you know, it's going to become the evil galactic emperor. I mean, who couldn't love a guy like that? I love, I love villains. I'm a big fan of villains. Yeah, you love the villains? When I was actually at school, I used to, I was the villain in a school play, Munro Murgatroyd. Yeah! Yeah! That kind of stuff. Gotta love villains. Monty Burns, too. I love Monty Burns. That's or, my idol. Uh, Green Goblin in, 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 um, in Spider-Man, too. You've got to admire the bad guys. Well, where do they go oh, wrong, then, Jim? <laughs> where do they go wrong? <coughs> where do you go wrong? Well... It's because what a person is smart enough to become galactic emperor. You've got to be reasonably clever to do that. And then, in Return of the Jedi, he, gets, he tells his main subordinate, his chief supporter, Darth Vader, to kill his only son. Now, how stupid can you be? How could you possibly believe somebody smart enough to become galactic emperor would be dumb enough to do something like that? Seriously. <laughs> I think it's just a myth. I think he got it completely wrong. Now, Jack, come back. You had some more questions as well for Jim. Yeah, so I have one of my own for, questions, actually. Go for it. You ask your questions, mate. I, I don't exactly remember what I put down there, but I'm pretty sure my question was, how did you get started? Like, why? More so, why did you start gyms? What motivated you? Well, I started gyms because I was hungry, because I was... I just, I'd spent yeah. several years getting myself a PhD in history, and I had nothing to do. I had no job, mm. and I wanted to fund my research. That's basically what it was. So okay. I need to become rich, so I started gyms to do that. Good on you. Nice. But it used to be my part-time student job. Really? That's right. I've actually been gardening since I was eight years old. Yeah. So it's kind of like... Yeah, no, that's been me. I was gardening ever since I was 10. Dad was never around. Mum always got me mowing lawns. Now it's like, well, what do I do? Mow lawns? <laughs> <laughs> what do I know? <laughs> my father was very disappointed when I went to... He, first of all, he was an engineer. He wanted me to become an engineer or a doctor. So doing an arts degree and a history PhD was not very good. And then when I finished that, and it became a, um, a gardener. You can just imagine what my father thought about that. I bet. But towards the end of his career, when I had about a thousand, his life, when I had about a thousand franchises, I actually said to him once, you know, Dad, it wasn't such a bad um, decision, was it? And he said, no, nah, guess not. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. Thank you. Good luck. Cheers. Cool, go for it. I was going to ask, who your favourite Jedi was, but clearly that's the wrong side of the team to be asking you Dark about. side, Dark definitely. Dark side all the way? Dark side. Yeah. I love the prequels, actually. I reckon it's really fun. I love the way that Palpatine becomes the, the Galactic Emperor. I think that's great. And also the way that um, um, 
Skywater goes to Anakin, goes to the dark side of the Force and why he does that. Mm. And he does it through love. Actually, I always thought being a Jedi was pretty stupid. I mean, I've got ten kids. I wouldn't want to not have any sex or love with anybody. That's a <laughs> terrible idea. I enjoy that kind of stuff. Yep. I would never be a Jedi. Mm. Never. And a follow-up question that sort of pertains to that. How did you find that the mapping of the human genome influenced your research? Obviously, oh, you big. started studying. It's big, it's big. When I did my PhD, we knew there was an effect of the environment somehow, but we didn't know what was causing it. When they mapped the genome and we started to realise it's epigenetic, suddenly it's totally different. I am very optimistic about what can happen to society. I think the changes you'll see as a result of epigenetics, changing your character, problems of drug addiction, problems of alcoholism, problem of poverty even, Mm -hmm. Crime, all these things are, to my mind, epigenetic in origin. If you understand the epigenome, then you can change these things. There's amazing changes in technology taking place. So what do you think is going to be the next biggest step in terms of genetic discovery? I think epigenetics is the big thing. Mm -hmm. I really do. There's more focus these days on genetics. But you know the statistics they've got, like CRISPR. You know what CRISPR is, where they actually go in and they target a certain area and they change a certain gene. They cut it, they inspire it. They do that kind mm -hmm. of things too. You can also use CRISPR to change the epigenetics. Because mm -hmm. epigenetics is basically, if you understand what genes are, they're basically, a, or DNA is, it's basically a whole series of little taps. The mm -hmm. genes send out a protein. That's how they mm -hmm. work, like a, a messenger RNA, something like that. What epigenetics does is that changes the taps. It turns it on, turns it off. Mm -hmm. So if you could understand that process and target that, you could change anything that you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Human beings are very, very similar genetically. We are much, much more similar, say, than chimpanzees. Mm. In the hum whole human race, there's less genetic variance than there is in a few kilometres, square kilometres of um, African rainforest. Mm -hmm. So the differences are epigenetic. If we understood that, we could change that. We could solve everything. Mm. Yeah, fascinating topic. Love exactly. to talk to you about it, Phil. Much, yeah. much longer. Great questions. <laughs> Grab a book if you like at the end of it. Great questions. There you go. Cool. Got one from Darren from Mowing. Where's Darren from Mowing? Is Darren here? Yes. Darren, <coughs> yep. Go I believe you've already answered the question. It was uh, your preference towards um, prequels versus the original versus the other one. But yeah. thank you. You've already okay. answered it. What's your preference? What do you like? The original three. I saw the first Star Wars in 77. And, uh, oh, I love that one too. Yeah, I can so, remember yeah, seeing that. The first that, three. And, that uh, Space Battle and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yes. Oh, great film. That was, uh, that the was original three are my favourite. But I still prefer the sequels. <laughs> the prequel, prequels. The, the latest stuff is rubbish. I can't read anything from the past, but um, Turn of the Jedi. They're no good. <laughs> Sorry. You're right. We've got Greg from, where's Greg from Mowing? Greg had a free question, Sid. Yep. I, um... I heard you're into gaming. I was just wondering what sort of gaming you like. I love um, basically fighting games, okay? Yeah. Things like Diplomacy, Apocalypse, those kinds of games where you invade somebody. To me, that's, that's the interest of the gaming, throwing cars down. Yeah. But I don't mind 500 and stuff like that. How, how do you handle all this and all those kids and all the things you do? Well, kids love fighting. I mean, especially when they're mainly boys. Oh, yeah. I'm actually just today, I'm in, arranging to take my son down to, to do, um, my 40 year old son, to do fencing. Yeah, right. I did it at uni, which is really fun. You know, with the swords and stuff. And you go, that, that's really yeah. like fighting. It's really fun. Yeah. Imagine trying to stab somebody. That is, that yeah. is just joyful. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> legally. And legally. I, and I heard you do a Mr. Burns impression. Excellent. <laughs> You can search for Jim in GIFs, and we do have GIFs with that as well, so oh, GIFs and whatever else. He is a, he's a wonderful character, Monty Burns. He is, he is my hero. Do you ever see the one about the trillion dollar banknote? He, they're all, they're all, they've gone to Cuba and, they, and they've, they've lost the, the, um, the banknote to Fidel Castro, so make the communist regime survive. So they're on a, on a boat, a raft going back to the US, and he says, if it's a crime to love your country, then I'm guilty. And if it's a crime to steal a trillion dollars and give it to your country's enemies, I'm guilty of that as well. And if it's a crime to bribe a jury to um, acquit me, I'll shortly be guilty of that as well. <laughs> Love Monty Burns. <laughs> I've classic. got a little Bobby bubble thing on my desk, Monty Burns. Yeah, someone gave you the little funk pop of that as well. Yeah, yeah put that on there. It is good. Cool. Next one here. Where's a, is it a shook from Pest Control? From Pest Control. And guys, if you do have a question, just come up and ask as well. Please interrupt. 
Uh, hi, Jim. Um, just a question. You have lots of videos on YouTube. Do you ever watch YouTube? And if you watch, what sort of stuff you watch on YouTube? Not a lot, actually. Strange enough, I, I don't really watch social media a lot. <laughs> okay. I, um, I'm more, I like books. Uh, yeah, I have a second question there as well. Uh, do you have any book recommendations, uh, non-fiction? Oh, there's so many great books around. I would recommend, I can't even begin to say how many there are. Atomic Habits, oh, yeah, that's great good. book about yeah. learning to have good habits, which is the key to anything in success. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey oh, yeah, is a I wonderful one. Yeah. Recent books, um, Case Against Education, I just finished reading that again, which shows why most education is rubbish. <laughs> past school okay. um, and helpful, just gives you a competitive advantage but doesn't teach you anything, uh -huh. which coming from the background of, of what we do, it makes a lot of sense. Expectation effect, which is about how the, what we expect affects what we do. Uh -huh. There are just so many brilliant books around, there's more and more all the time. Uh -huh. I love evolutionary psychology too. Uh -huh. I just finished reading David Buss on evolutionary psychology, not everybody's taste, but uh -huh. I, I love books, I really, <laughs> really love books. No, that's, that's awesome, I've got two new ones, thank you. Yeah, yeah, he's got a personal newsletter, which he does every month as well. Yeah, read my newsletter. Yeah. Just, just subscribe to it. And, and I, I put book recommendations all the time. Oh, okay. JimPenman.com.au. So we, we do monthly newsletter with Jim with all yeah. the books and yeah, stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Cool, good questions as well. Cool, where's Chantel, <coughs> it's Chantel from Cleaning here? Where's Chantel? So here, I'll read this out for Chantel. She's asked, who is your favourite child? It's a bit hard. <laughs> a bit cheeky. <laughs> you can't answer that question. Yeah. <laughs> All of them. All of them's the answer. They're all my favourite. Yeah, all of them. Love all my kids. It's like asking your favourite division as well, isn't it? Your favourite gym's division. We used to get that one a bit. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have to say though, if you ask me that though, Maureen, because I sort of bleed green. That's my that's my background. But I love all my divisions. I love all everybody, all my franchises. Dude. They're all my all my kids. Next one we have here is from Gavin from Cleaning. Is Gavin from Cleaning here? Gavin? No, I'll ask you for him. Guys, if you want to come up and ask a question, please feel free to do it as well. Yeah, go ahead. Um, just in, in regards to that, the divisions there, there's obviously majority mowing here. Do you ever see it getting to a point where the training is specific for mowing and then specific for cleaning and then specific for dog wash? Because there's a lot of question, there's a lot of um, details in today where, or the last few days where it'd be nice to get it specific for mowing because that's the division that I'm buying in. But the, the teachers often use another example to make it fair for everyone else. But I've got a lot more questions based off just my division. So do you ever see it getting to a point where the amount of franchisees that come in, it's specifically for mowing and then the dog wash guys come in and it's specifically for dog wash? Yeah, look, it's an interesting idea, <clears throat> but the principles are very similar. Yeah. It's just the examples that you give. Like in my talk that I gave... Um, yesterday morning, you know, I, I try and spread it around. One of the things I'm trying to be careful of is not to give too many mowing courts talks. But the principles are the same. Yeah, I know. If you're upselling, now whether you're upselling rubbish removal or clearing um, ovens or, or, or different for pest control, the principle is exactly yeah. the same. The way you ask the question is the same. So I don't think so. Because I noticed, I noticed that a lot of the guys that did the talking to, over the last two days were mowing guys but they were trying to use examples that yeah. weren't mowing to make it fair for everyone else. But I feel like that took away from the experience just a little bit. Okay, I'm not gonna take your point. We'll have, we'll have a think about it. But yeah. um, at the moment, we see a benefit. The other thing too, we like to encourage people from different divisions to get to know each other. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of, cross-divisional is a big thing with us because there's a lot of potential. Yeah, I mean, your fellow mowing people can help you. But if you get to know people in other divisions, they can actually help each other a lot more because you can spread work and referrals back and forth. It's a good point, though, because we do get that. It, look, it is, yeah. it is a good point, actually. I, I appreciate you saying that. And we do have the division-specific training, obviously, mowing, which we'll have, then clean, then dog wash afterwards. Yeah. But, yeah, we do try and we're real conscious. You're right. We are conscious of including yeah. the other divisions because we get in trouble when we yeah. don't, you know. Yeah. So we try and... I definitely noticed that. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely a conscious effort on all the presenters. We do put a lot of pressure on people at times, too. You do have to be careful about your examples. Yeah. And, and it's not always obvious to do it. But no, it's a very good thought. Hello well, again. With over 30 divisions already, what influences you to develop new divisions? Oh, just somebody comes to us with an idea. And if they're the right person with the right, we'll start it. Supply and demand? Well, it's the right person more than anything else. Okay. If we're impressed with the person, it looks like a good division, mm -hmm. then yeah, we, we do it. I mean, look, the, the great thing about gyms is this. Every time... A gym's laundry drives down the road. 
You're not just promoting Jim's laundry, you're also promoting Jim's mowing, cleaning, dog wash, pest control, building inspections, IT. We all support each other. Yeah. So every division, so you have another division with another 50 vans or whatever they are, or cars or whatever. Every other division benefits. So there's really no upper limit. We've got probably 40 something divisions now. We could have 140 and we'd be all the better for it. And there's, there's more opportunities for cross-divisional. See, one of the things I do, if somebody's short of work, can't get cross-divisional, can't get enough work for their division, say, in the beginning, I will send them a list of all the franchisees from other divisions in their service area. And then you've got email. You can actually go and email 150 people. You wouldn't want to once you get flooded and say, can I come and clean your house? Or can I come and, if you've got a pool that I can clean, or can I wash your dog for free? And what that does is that creates a relationship between divisions. So it's actually a tremendous power for us to have this system where you have specialised divisions that understand what they do, but you have the generic system where we all work together under the single brand. Yeah. It works very well. And the more divisions we have, the more each division sends to benefit. Good question. You got one? Yep. Um, you mentioned earlier you history major. Just wondering whether you have any particular favourite areas of history that you're interested in. Good I question. love ancient history actually, particularly mm -hmm. ancient Greece. That's my favourite. I read the Peloponnesian Wars when I was 14 and I got hooked on it. Yeah. Have so, you been to Greece? No. No. <laughs> I'm no traveller. I hate travel. <laughs> okay. Even going to Sydney is too far for me. Yeah. <laughs> but I read about it a lot. If I went anywhere, a bit of Greece. Yeah. What about you? What's your favourite? Uh, I mean, I like, I love ancient history as well. Um, but I'm also very interested in like the world, World War One, World War Two, that kind of thing. I've done a fair bit of travel myself, and I love all that kind of you know going somewhere where something ancient happened. It's yeah, it's awesome. I tell you what, <laughs> get into biohistory. Um, that's www.biohistory.org, mm. and you'll see a reason for the First World War, which is nothing like you've ever seen before. It's to do with the same thing as causes lemmings to migrate. Okay. <laughs> Read that section. Thank you. We'll do. Cheers. Very well dressed for tonight as well, I might say. That's great. Good, good clothes. Everyone wants to come up, please. Please do as well. We've got some time left. We've got some questions <laughs> online, Jim, as well. So I'm going to run through the ones online because people do leave them. So Craig Rope's gone. What other divisions are available as, unfortunately, it seems removals is unavailable? So I think Craig wants to do removals, but it's not available. What other divisions are around that people could do? There's so many. Look it up. There's new divisions starting all the time. We've got, we've got, we're looking at a new division. Be more than once a week, we once have somebody week, talking yeah. about a new division. There's probably, there's probably going to be at least half a dozen launched by the end of the year, the way things are going right now. There's just so many. Keep an eye on the, on the website and have a look. I think one of the most exciting ones that we're looking forward to is Jim's um, vending machines. Because it's the one that people can use when they've, you know, like they've been mowing for, getting a bit lower in the tooth. And here's the vision. You can use your business skills to do something a bit less physically than well, It's a big thing in America, the vending machines, when people yeah. might have multiple and go around. It's not, it hasn't caught on here yet. But. It's a great business. And, and the way they present it, people are doing it are fantastic. There's a lot of really brilliant ideas. Most of the visions we do, actually, I never even heard of before we started. I didn't even know you could do test and tag. I thought Sparky's did it. And somebody came to us and said, I've got a business doing test and tag. Really? You can do that? It's now one of our, about our third biggest division. Yeah, third, 230 franchises. Yeah. yeah. Great division. And how can people start a division, though? If everyone here wants to say, when they start, what, what can they do? If you want to start a division, Jim, Jim at Jimstein, email me and talk about it. I'll ask you a few hard questions about what your division is about, what you want to do, does it conflict, what's your background, that kind of thing. If it all goes well, set up a Zoom meeting with myself and Rocky, the CEO of the company. We'll talk further. Ask them more questions, invite answers, put you through a process, ring the divisionals, come to training, franchise or training, franchisee training, come to a divisional conference, which is coming slightly. Mm. Uh, just, just learn about us and then just, if you feel right, move in that way. And another one online as well, so from Kay has gone, are you, looking, are you only looking at the service industry for new divisions or are you open to take on other types of industries like retail? No, I'm not open. We are very good at what we do. In all due modesty, in the service industry, you cannot beat us. If you start looking at retail, that's a very different area, and we're not good at it. The only thing we ever tried with a site was to do with um, health clubs, and mm -hmm. that was a disaster. We didn't understand what we were doing, and quite sadly, people lost their shirts out of it. Mm. It was not good experience. Guys, if you've got a question, please feel free to come up and ask. We've got some more spots. Um, got Gavin from Cleaning. Where's Gavin? Is Gavin here? <coughs> But Gavin asked you, what is your favourite type of music genre and what do you listen to? Uh, Christian music. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, 
I don't listen to a lot of music because I mostly listen to talking books. Mm. But the music I listen to is mostly Christian music, like we're going to church in the car and this kind of thing. I like, yeah, simple as that. There you go. We've got one here from Osama. Is Osama from cleaning here? Osama, you gone? No, Osama basically goes, would you do it all over again? Oh, yes. But I'd do it a lot better. <laughs> How would you do it better? Oh, there's so many mistakes that I've made, unbelievable number of mistakes. For example, keeping more control of the call centers from the beginning, um, different contracts. We've got much better contracts these days. I'd invest much more in IT up front. Wouldn't worry so much about the legal side of things. I think contracts are less important. I would do far, far more with IT. I've made so many mistakes with IT. I'd redeveloped the system in more modern software. I just can't keep on going. There are people that I shouldn't have taken on. There are divisions we shouldn't have started. I made, we've learned a lot about how to do that better. We just, we've, we've wasted millions of dollars doing mistakes, I can tell you. If you read the book, actually, that we all gave you, you'll see it's full of mistakes. But that's the thing, you see. You, 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 if you don't make mistakes, you're not trying stuff. But I often wish I could go back 10 years. I, I, I'd change so much. And your book is also an Audible as well, so they can listen to it as well if they want to. Yes. You've got a couple of comments online from Adam's gone. Adam from Jim's IT. Penrith again saying, it was saying, I'm really happy where I am right now. Things are slowly getting better. The more I go out and meet people, not just sit there waiting for leads. So he's in our IT division where he's getting out there a bit more amongst it. Yeah. IT was a bit of an issue, actually. We yeah. had a, a time when um, close to half of the franchisees in the division were reporting poor income. And that was really a crisis. Now, they've actually done a lot of extra work now, and now it's down to a fraction of that. So it's a, it's a big improvement. But we've got a lot to learn about how to do certain things too. Sometimes we need to do a lot better. Social media is one thing we should have gone to a lot earlier. Hmm. I mean, Joel's done a fantastic job, and it's really changed the business in so many ways. We should have started that much more heavily a long time ago. It's been a huge success for us. We're nine, ten years behind. We should have started in 2010. Would yeah, have been the time to do it, it would have started. It's one of the things we would have done a long way back. Yes. It takes you so long to learn how to do anything. And most of it's just learning, making mistakes, working how to do stuff better. I would go back in time 14 years, but never beyond that. You know, there's a film called About Time. Um, have you ever seen that one? Yep. They, have this, they have this thing where you get, because this is something to do with the family, they can go into a, a closet or somewhere, close their eyes, clench their fist, and go back to a specific time they think about. They can change the past. I love that film, I love that idea. But in the end, what happens actually is his sister gets into a very abusive relationship and he goes back to stop her from getting into that. But by doing so, he loses his daughter who was born afterwards. So he has to go back and undo it and let his sister go through that because he wouldn't give up his children. So I often daydream about going back in time, but never before any of my children were conceived. Mm. We've got a question, guys. Feel free to come up and ask them as well. We've got a couple more online. Tanya Selex has gone, how did you keep motivated to being successful and not give up when you felt like you were failing? I, I can't give up because of my research. I just couldn't give up. It's not in my nature to give up. I just, I feel a moral imperative. I feel a moral obligation to my research. I feel a moral obligation to my franchisees. You cannot give up. It's just not something that's in my mental makeup. Mm. I'm, I'm a fairly tough individual. It doesn't matter what happens, I will keep going. But you've got to have a sense of purpose in life. I don't believe that making money and piling up possessions and stuff is, is, is worthwhile. I mean, what's it for? You've got, to be, you've, got to be, you've got to be doing your work for something. And I don't live particularly rich, actually. Until recently, my car was worth 10 grand. I got my first ever new car in November last year. That's because I want an electric car and it's also safer. But I do not spend. You know, these boots are from Kmart. I do not spend money. I don't enjoy it. I don't think it's a good way to do it, just to spend on, but spending on something worthwhile, spending on expanding my business, spending on my research, those are worthwhile. And if you've got a good motivation in life, you've got a sense of purpose, you've got a reason for getting up in the morning, I think you're less likely to want to give up. Mm. But money alone is a terrible motivator. It really is. There's a, a brother of a, a close friend of mine who committed suicide some years back. This guy was very rich, richer than me, but screwed up family life and killed himself. What's the point of the money? Mm. And actually the science shows you that the, the, the money is actually, people think you've got more money, you're gonna make a better life, like have a better, bigger house or a better car or more expensive holidays, I'll be happy. It doesn't work that way. There's a wonderful saying that goes, um, 
Social comparison is the thief of joy. If, you, if what you're doing is getting more money so you can be more prestigious than somebody else, that's a zero-sum game. It's like likes on Facebook. It's a really bad way to live your life. You've got to have something that means something to you. Your family, your friends, your cause, your purpose, your job, something that's got to have meaning. In my sense, my church, for example, of course. Yeah, go off the question. Go on over there. Yeah. Um, who is the biggest uh, franchise you honor in terms of revenue and then um, evaluation? And then what do, you think, what do you think they did differently than any other owners? Who is the biggest franchisee in terms of turnover? I wouldn't even know. We, were, we don't know because we don't ask the exact figures. So we only know when they tell us, right? We do know that the top, top earners are in multiple millions. But they don't usually tell us that. So, um, I, mean, I mean, Dan was pretty good. He was 800,000 plus turnover at his, before he left. But he was not, not by any means not, not the biggest earner in Jim's group. I know one guy had like two and a half million dollars a year or something turnover. I met a couple. I met one lady, Frieda's 18 employees in cleaning. So that'd be a fairly substantial revenue business. That's eight yeah. full-time employees. So. We don't tend to ask such things, actually, but they make a lot of money. People, people are surprised by that. You, you tend to think that the biggest earners in gyms are the franchisors, but actual fact, there's a lot of franchisees make more money than the vast majority of franchisors. In fact, I would think the top earners in gyms group are probably franchisees, not franchisors, but we don't really know. If you do make a lot of money, tell us, and mm. we'll, we'll do a video about it, and we'll promote it online. We'll do. Yeah, for sure. We love good news stories, actually. I went, I went over here for a fact. I'll talk to them. I get a good story. I'll, I'll pass it to Joel. They do a, vi a video. We've got these at core vouchers. Yeah, 600 bucks worth of it. Yeah, which is just a free accommodation and discounted meals and all kinds of great stuff. We just give them out to anybody who does an interview. We've got some brilliant stories. Yeah, but it, it probably um, millions probably what I've heard. I haven't heard overly too much, but people employing 18 staff and stuff is going to be a fairly substantial business so yeah. yeah people don't want to promote how much they really i guess earn online too much so but you know you can figure it out when they tell you they've got 18 staff or 25 staff or something yes. like that how we, much we do doing? not condone tax evasion in <laughs> any way shape or form we would never advise we make good money as a group franchise you know, good money you should pay completely honest tax on all your income cash and otherwise. However, we are aware this doesn't always happen, all right? Can I put it that way? We don't condone it, we just know it happens. <laughs> Got a couple of questions online real quickly, Jim, as well. Ognan's gone, asked him what is the next line of franchises will be, so what are some newer divisions that are going to be starting soon? Well, lots of ones. Um, uh, I mentioned a few. Um, you said Jim's massage is definitely going Massage, yep. beauty, Tutoring, maybe hairdressing. We just talked about the today. What's the one about the, uh, the hydraulic fixing? Oh yeah, I don't know the one you're about. Yeah, I don't know what it's called, but the hydro hydraulic guy. Yeah. Yeah, there's just there's yeah. just so many we're talking about. Some one to do with with uh, a coaching, life coaching. Yeah. which she's preparing some preparation for that. We know what's going to go ahead, but uh, there are so many. We probably at least once a week we're talking to somebody about a potential new division. Mm. But it's often up to them. You say they've got to have go through the process and really, really want it. We don't push people to start a new division. They have to be very hungry. For sure. Go for it. Uh, two questions. Uh, back to the Future, fan or not a fan? Oh, fat, that's fantastic. I love Back to the oh, Future. Good. I must have seen it about four times, all of them. Brilliant. And your <laughs> epigenetics book, is there going to be another epigenetics follow-up book? Yes, we're actually starting work on a book called Lemming Cycle, which is to do with a chapter in that. We've made some very big advances in understanding how those work. <coughs> lemming cycles are to do with things like, um, well, you know what lemmings do. They have these population booms when they, when they migrate like mad. They don't commit suicide, they migrate. But a lot of animals do that, like voles, muskrats, especially in northern areas. What people don't realise is that humans have lemming cycles too. And when they get to the migration phase is when you get wars taking place, like the First World War. Because both Germany and Russia hit their lemming cycle peak migration phase at the same time, about 1915. And that's why that war took place. So, yeah. The new book coming out, I don't know where, next couple of years probably. Good. Yeah, good Thanks. question. We've got another one online real quickly. Jim from Wayne Grunny says, Hey Jim, have you ever thought about doing a Jim's Group Christmas party? Well, we'd love to, because who, who'd come? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. I think you believe the franchisee level, so yeah. <coughs> we shouldn't do it, actually, you know. 
<coughs> we're, we're looking, we, we sort of have them in trade days in a way because you have a lot of free food and stuff. But I wouldn't mind. But not everybody could come here, though. That's the problem. You couldn't do one in every state as a... No, that's a bit hard. hard. Yeah, we do one here, but not everywhere else. You don't tend to get franchisees. They tend to, franchisees tend to identify with their own region and their own area more than they do with the... A lot of regions generally. do some good ones, absolutely. Yeah, they do. Yeah. That's generally what we, we encourage. In meetings, you have meals, you have a Christmas lunch of some kind. We do that kind of stuff. If any franchisors are thinking they can take the lawn lager as well from the office for their um, Christmas parties, there's a lot of them to get around, so yeah. they can do a deal with that. We, we'd, love it. we'd love it to happen, actually. For sure. Guys, if you've got no more questions, or if you've got another question, please ask Jim. If not, we're going to award the prizes, Jim. So what were your three questions that stood out to you? And I get to have first pick up here. What was the number? What was the first one? I love, what, sorry, what was your name? Chris. Chris, I love your idea, Chris. I think the fact that you came up with a new idea that nobody's ever said before made me think about it. I think it's great. I love that. Come so come up and pick anything First you like, pick. Chris. You can take anything. It's hard to ask a question that nobody's ever had. There we go. Good man. Well, I love what somebody said about life's, um, about balance of life between, between work and family. Who said that? Yes, second, yep. I think you've really hit the, the nub of what's important. And grab something, yeah, come up and take anything, anything you like. Okay. Yeah, I thought you Good get, good get. That's a good one. And what about the third one? Oh, I like the question about my favourite Star Wars. Who said the prequels? Was that you? Yeah. Yeah, come up and pick anything you like, mate. Come and, pick. and if you did ask a question as well, please come and see me at the end it, it, and take it. Take anybody something. else who wants to come forward who's asked a question at the microphone, come forward. You want to take the shirt? You can take the shirt if you want. I'm not the shirt and book. You want the book or the shirt? The shirt's a good shirt. Very good shirt. Cool, good man. Cool, if you ask the question, guys, as well, please come and see me at the end. You can have a prize as well. If you want a photo as well with Jim, now's a really good time because it's a massive rush on Wednesday. There'll be nine news here and stuff. It'll be chaos. So get one now as well. We do this every three to four weeks. So if you did ask a question tonight, you'll see us yourself on social media. <coughs> and big thank you to Jim as well for your time and for your great questions. And we hope you enjoy the rest of the training experience. Bye.